The infamous accident on the Smiler at Alton Towers on June 2nd, 2015 has been described as inaccurately as this. A mechanical issue is believed to have automatically sent out an empty carriage around 2 p.m. Shortly after, 16 people got aboard another carriage that deployed after the empty cab. The mechanical error automatically triggered a fail-safe stop, which enabled the empty carriage to stop along the bottom of a loop. As the 16-passenger carriage dove into the same loop, it collided and crashed into the empty cab up to 50 miles per hour. In reality, no mechanical malfunction occurred and a variety of human errors combined with miscommunication caused the accident. All sources linked in the description. On June 2nd, 2015, around 1 p.m., the Smiler was being operated with four trains in 46 mile per hour winds, despite the manufacturer stating it cannot run in winds excess of 34 miles per hour. Sometime shortly after 1 p.m., the ride experienced a fault and the ride operators stopped loading new riders and emptied the current ones from the four trains. The ride operators then called maintenance. While the ride was down, the ride operators took the opportunity to transfer on the fifth train due to the high number of guests in the park that day. To transfer on the fifth train, the ride operators had to send an empty train around the track to allow the newly added train to cycle empty. Due to the high winds, the ride operators should have weighted the empty trains with water dummies to prevent them from valleying in the high winds. This was not done and the first empty train was sent around the ride without valleying. Around 1.40 p.m., ride maintenance had completed fixing the fault from earlier and were ready to reopen the ride. The fifth train the ride operators had just added was sitting in the station and needed to be cycled empty before any guests could board it. It was dispatched from the station without weights, and the train behind it was loaded with guests. Train 5 valleyed due to high winds. At this point, the ride operator and controls, along with maintenance personnel, should have noticed that this had occurred. They did not, and the ride operator dispatched the next loaded train from the station. This loaded train was then stopped by the ride safety system at the top of lift 1, as the ride only allows one train in a block at a time, and the valley train was in the block the loaded train was trying to enter. Maintenance personnel looked at the safety brakes of the ride and were able to see three trains. Unaware that a fifth train was added, they assumed there was simply a ghost train and maintenance went to the base of lift 1 to override the ride's block safety system. At 1.51 p.m., lift 1 was manually restarted by maintenance, leading to the loaded train colliding with the valleyed empty train. So what went wrong in this tragic accident and what could have been done to prevent it? The first thing that went wrong is that Alton Towers failed to take the Smiler down for high winds. They likely chose to operate the ride outside of its specified range for wind due to the high number of guests in the park that day. The second thing that went wrong is the ride operators failed to tell maintenance they had transferred on a fifth train. The third and final thing that caused this accident was maintenance overriding the ride's block safety system after they failed to visually confirm the location of all trains. Since this accident, Alton Towers and other parks have taken note of what happened and worked hard to ensure that something like this never happens again. Many rides will simply not start if winds are higher than its manufacturer says it can operate in. Ride operators trained in controls across the world are drilled to always know the position of all trains on their ride at all times, and maintenance workers at Alton Towers and many other parks must know exactly where all trains are on a ride before they override a ride's block system. To place blame, I would say that 50% of the responsibility is on Alton Towers themselves for failing to take the ride down for high winds like any responsible park would regardless of the number of guests in the park. The ride operators that day share about 25% of their responsibility as they failed to inform maintenance that they had added the fifth train, and they did not wait their empty trains. And the maintenance team also shares 25% of the blame as they failed to visually confirm the positions of all trains. This ultimately led to the accident. The Smiler and the industry as a whole is now much safer thanks to this accident.